Hello and welcome back to another tutorial on the Create Mod. Today we are going to be going over a tileable brass ingot farm that produces up to a thousand brass ingots per module here, as well as 500 gold, 500 iron, which are both pretty good. And if you want to enable it, you can, instead of brass, get 500 zinc and 500 copper. As you can see here, it is tileable. We have the lone module over here that is just three wide. And then over here, I've tiled it to three separate modules that each produce a thousand brass per hour. And this is what it's looking like. You will need to supply your own source of diorite, andesite, and lava. You can either have a lava farm in the overworld, or if you're using some other mods, transport it from the nether, or you could low-key just make a hole in the overworld. If it's 25 by 25 by 16, that will be enough for it to count as an infinite source and just pull it up from there. So an infinite lava source isn't too difficult in the create mod. And I have a farm for andesite and diorite that I will put a card on the screen now for. So if you haven't seen that, you can check it out. But I think it is time to get started. This farm specifically is going to work in version 0.5.1.f. And that is solely because this fluid pipe will connect to the blaze burner here and feed it lava continuously. A good way to check if this will work is if you just place down a blaze burner and connect two fluid pipes like this. If it curves and goes into the blaze burner, then this farm should probably work for you. The farm is pretty simple to create. It is 15 blocks long, including this item vault here that I would probably recommend just removing it and doing a belt to your main storage system. And as I mentioned, kind of the main benefit of this is that it's tileable so you can make it as big or as small as you'd like. The stress units for both the single module and triple module are behind me. As you can see, it's just over 12,000 stress units for the single module and pretty much exactly triple that for the triple one. As I mentioned, you do need a source of diorite and andesite for this farm. According to my calculations, you need about 2,500 of each in order for this to work at max speed. But even if you half that, you're still getting 500 brass per hour, which is plenty. Now, before we get into how to build it or how the schematics work, let me walk you through kind of what we're doing here. So obviously, as you can see, we have three sources, diorite, lava, and andesite, with diorite and andesite coming in to both of these basins that make the tuff on either side of the basins like this. We are then using the fluid pipes and the mechanical pipes to dump lava in from the top, and then the mixers just go straight through these pipes and mix it into tuff below. Underneath, we have chutes that drop the tuff out onto the main belt here that goes up into the item vault, crushed, put into this item vault, which dumps out all the nuggets into this basin to get crushed into ingots. And then the ingots go either into this basin where they get turned into brass or just into the main storage system. For all the flint that's being made, we have a cauldron back here that when filled with lava will delete all the flint. And I'm going to be honest, you don't need this much flint. If you want it for some reason, just remove this brass funnel and then you'll be good to go. In the front here, as we saw, this makes brass by mechanical mixer with a blaze burner underneath. The blaze burner is being fed lava from these pipes here. And then we have a redstone link that just turns off both of these if you want to instead just collect the zinc and copper. If you're building the schematic in your world instead of following the tutorial, you're just going to need to replace some of the item vault blocks here just so that they reform to a three by three, a two by two, and you should replace this one by one because even that breaks sometimes. And then depending on your orientation, you're going to have to perhaps switch the rotation speed controller to counterclockwise or clockwise, depending on which way these belts are going. You will also need to come to the front of the machine and place a lava source in this lava cauldron to successfully delete the flint here. And then on the front of the vault where this second brass funnel is placed, you're going to need to delete it, wait a few seconds, and then replace it again with this normal copper and zinc list filter. This will just make it so that these other brass funnels are prioritized instead of this one. If you want to make this tileable, the schematic that's in the description is going to include a large cogwheel rotation speed controller clutch creative motor and on and off switch down there. In order to duplicate it, you just need to first turn off the system, place the machine in, and then remove the large cogwheel clutch rotation speed controller. You don't need to technically remove the redstone link, but it'll save you a little bit of money. And if you're in creative, remove the creative motor as well, and then it should just work. That should be all of the difficult stuff out of the way. 
Now moving on to the tutorial. I'm going to have all of the ingredients that you'll need in the description down below for only one module. If you want to make three, just triple it and follow the tutorial three times. As I mentioned briefly before, you're going to need a three wide space that is 15 blocks long and five blocks tall. The only five block section here is these mechanical mixers up at the very top here. And otherwise it is four blocks tall. I'm going to start at the back here because this is where you're going to need to put in your diorite, lava, and andesite, and also to connect your power. So we're going to start in the back right corner here with a rotation speed controller and a large cogwheel on top. Depending on the direction that you're facing, you will either need to set this to 256 counterclockwise or clockwise. Just set it to counterclockwise and you can see at the very end which way these shafts are turning. Then on this close side, we're going to put a clutch. Here is where you're going to hook up any of your power. I'm going to be using a creative motor, so I'm just going to hook it up now. And this thing will be turning. Obviously, you do, do not need to hook up the power just yet. If instead of having it here, you want to move it to the other side, you can also do that. So don't worry about that. But then let's get in our sources. So obviously, you're not going to have creative crates or anything else here. So first, you're going to need to feed in your diorite source, wherever that is, onto right above this large cogwheel. You can do this by having a shaft here and here with belts going on either direction, and then a volt of some sort that just is a middleman between each shaft. Or you can have a diagonal shaft here that goes up and over like this. There's a bunch of ways to do it and it shouldn't be that difficult to figure out a way that fits your needs. So I'm just going to place down two creative crates here, but obviously you'll have to do something a little bit more specific. And then in the middle here, I'm placing down a creative fluid tank. This is where you're going to bring in your lava source. There is space right behind it to bring in lava, or additionally, you can kind of just bring it in wherever you want. If you want to bring it over from the side or from the front and reverse the polarity of this whole thing, you can do it that way as well. But I'm doing it from the back just for convenience. Moving on. And I'm putting in diorite on the left-hand side and andesite on the right-hand side. It does not matter which one is which. I'm just keeping it this way to kind of keep in line with these creative crates here. Then, as I said, we're putting in our lava, which at least for my design is going to then go straight into a fluid pipe and then a mechanical pump facing towards the front of the build. Then beneath this fluid tank, we're going to place a gearbox here with a small cogwheel right behind it, I guess in front of it, if this is the front of the machine, and then below this and to the side of this one as well. So you should get this corner staircase bit of cogwheels. We're then going to grab one andesite casing and place it around this cogwheel. And this is going to be here so that we can place down the redstone link that is going to power this clutch over here. Speaking of this clutch, on top of it, we're going to place a shaft. This will be where the diorite, as you can see right there, goes along and gets put into all of these basins. The same thing is going to happen on the other side here with another shaft kind of mirroring the one over there. And then next to this andesite encased cogwheel, we're going to place one more shaft over here. Then grab another gearbox, place it here and connect it to this shaft. This is a great time to check which way your rotation speed controller should be facing. If this one is spinning around towards the front of the build, like if this was a belt, would the belt be pushing items forwards? If so, then you're putting it the right way. If not, just switch it, and then it will be going the right way. For me, currently this is going the wrong way, so I'm gonna switch it back, and now it's going the correct way. We're then going to place a shaft right next to this one, connect these two with a belt, and then we're going to extend it two more blocks by right clicking on it with a belt. So it should be four blocks total. And then on the end of this one, we're going to place one more shaft here that will eventually have a belt on it. Then we're going to grab our smart shoots and place them on top of this belt and lone shaft here with basins on top of all of them. And just for safety, I'm going to set all of these filters to tough just to make sure nothing bad happens. And then after that, we can put in all of the fluid pipes here all along the way here until you get to this basin. Then we're going to grab a shaft, connect it to this shaft here with a belt and then extend it by one block like this. On this other side, we are going to place two shafts here, connect the middle shaft with the one down below with a belt. And then while you're here, let's connect this shaft to this one with a belt. Now underneath here, we're going to break a couple of blocks just to get this set up. We're going to place another shaft right below this middle shaft at the very end of the smart shoots. And then we'll have three shafts here like this. You're then going to extend all three of them 
and place a belt between all three. This should start moving all of your belts towards the front of the farm like this. And now we can start placing in our funnels that go into the basin. So just shift right click brass funnels onto all of the basins on either side here. Now, again, I'm gonna set the filters to these just so that nothing that we don't want goes in. You probably don't have to do this, but I am just being safe. Then at the end of these belts, we're gonna place two gear boxes on both ends here with a shaft in the middle. We're gonna connect this shaft with the one down below that we placed a little bit earlier. And that should start spinning both of these gearboxes. We're then going to grab crushing wheels and place them on the end of both gearboxes, and they should both be spinning towards the center. We're then going to grab a smart chute and a volt, place the volt on top of the smart chute and the smart chute on top of the crushing wheels. Again, you can set this to tough if you'd like. I'm going to just for funsies. I didn't do it over here, so it's not the end of the world if you don't do it. I then almost forgot we need to extend this belt one more so that it can get up to this item volt. So on this belt here, the one that is kind of in between all three belts here, we're just gonna right click on it with a belt and it should go all the way up. This does stop these belts from working. So make sure you replace the shaft here and then these should be spinning again. We're then gonna place a brass funnel right into this item vault. And it should mean that every item, oops, every item that goes onto this belt is gonna go straight into the brass funnel, straight into the item vault. Below these crushing wheels, we're gonna place one shaft directly below it with another one right next to it and connect both of these with a belt. We can then connect this belt up to the main kind of power belt that we're building here just by extending this belt all the way till one block before the final width of the farm. So currently it will be three longer than the belt that we just placed. We're then gonna need to replace some of the shafts that got moved when we move this belt. So right below this belt end cap here, we're going to place another shaft and that should start back up the crushing wheels. And then we're going to place a shaft in the belt right under the crushing wheels and another one here. And that should turn on this belt here that was placed directly under the crushing wheels. We're then going to place a three by three volt here and that should be all connected. And on the crushing wheel side, we're going to place another brass funnel, a cauldron and a another, another brass funnel set to dump out into the cauldron with flint as the filter. We're then gonna place a lava source in the cauldron and this will throw out any of the flint that we get because nobody wants flint. We're then right next to this large crushing wheel, we're gonna place a basin with a mechanical press on top. This basin, as you should see, should be dumping stuff out onto this main belt here right next to this brass funnel. That is what we want. And then make sure this mechanical press is rotated so it's getting power from this way. In the basin, we're gonna set a list filter to make any ingot that we can, iron ingot, gold ingot, copper ingot, zinc ingot, and place it into the basin, just like this. And then in between the basin and the crushing wheel, we're gonna place another brass funnel. And on this brass funnel, we're gonna set another list filter to all of the corresponding nuggets, iron, gold, copper, and zinc. And we're gonna place it in here. Then stepping back just a little bit, we're gonna connect a gearbox up to this shaft here, set it to a vertical gearbox, place another gearbox on top of it, this one as well vertical, and then we're gonna connect this vertical gearbox to the mechanical press just with a shaft. We can then grab this fluid pipe and bring it all the way to the front of the item vault like this, bring it down underneath like so, and leave it there for now. You no will notice that this linked up to the lava cauldron if you right click it with a wrench, it should just turn into a glass fluid pipe and now it should not connect. Back over here to clean up this loop, we're just gonna place a blaze burner and this fluid pipe should connect directly to it. On top of this blaze burner, we're gonna place a basin with the filter set to brass ingots. On top of the basin, we're gonna place a mechanical mixer and in between the mechanical mixer and the basin, we're gonna place another brass funnel set to drop copper ingots out into the basin. We're then right next to it, gonna place another brass funnel with a hopper going into the basin with this filter set to zinc. We're then gonna place two brass funnels coming out of the vault like this. And the top one is going to have a list filter set to copper ingots and zinc ingots. Right click that in there. And the bottom one should have a list filter set to iron ingots and gold ingots. Then we're gonna move over here to this belt and place a vertical gearbox with a clutch on top, another vertical gearbox and a cog wheel connecting to the mechanical mixer. Now we can finally connect up this mechanical pump to the lava. The reason I didn't do this before 
is because this blaze burner needed to be connected. And if you don't connect it first, while you're bringing along this fluid pipe, lava sources are going to spawn everywhere and it'll be a whole issue. So connect it up. Once we've done that, you should see that the lava is in every single one of the basins, as well as this blaze burner up front here. And we should see that pretty much almost everything is spinning and working. You will notice that we don't have any mixers on top of these basins. So let's place those in now, and then we need a way to power them. So onto this mechanical mixer, we're going to place a cogwheel with a vertical gearbox right below it and a final cogwheel here that should connect up all of these and make them start spinning. Then we're going to come back over to the front here and set up our storage system. So yours is probably going to look different than mine. You could put a vault here if you want. I'm going to do a drawer just to show that you can do this as well. And it is as simple as just placing a brass funnel into whatever storage medium you're using, or you can bring some other belts and bring it to your storage system that way. Now that should be everything. I think the last thing to do is test it out and place down all of these funnels here. We should see that the diorite is getting picked up and put into these basins like this. And then we're going to do the same thing on the andesite side. And we should now see that every single one of these mechanical mixers are working and this item vault is getting tough in it. We should then see that first of all, no nuggets are coming out and putting in the drawer which is good, and they are all dropping into this basin. You should be able to have all four sets of nuggets in this basin at a time, and it'll just crush when you get a full ingot's worth of one of them. We should also see that when the copper and zinc crafting is working, the brass ingots get placed out and put into this drawer, and it is already working really, really well. The very last thing we need to do is to place in the on off switch back here and up front here, be able to turn off brass crafting. So for that, we're going to need a redstone link set to receive mode with zinc in the red and copper in the blue. And then all the way in the back here, place down a redstone link set to receive mode and then place a clutch in red and a brass ingot in blue. This will turn off for me because I already have this super simple control panel over here with this off. If we flick that, it will turn back on again, along with all the other bajillion farms that we have in here. And if we flick this lever, it should start making zinc and copper. Now, before we do that, I am going to get rid of all the brass and hopefully it doesn't make more in the quick time that I flicked this, it didn't. So now we should see once we flick that, that all of the copper and zinc are coming out of this top brass funnel here. You can verify that by just making sure that both of these brass funnels are locked, meaning they have red in the back here, which it is. And this clutch is now no longer working, meaning we save a couple of stress units on the mechanical mixer. And again, we can see that it is in fact making zinc and copper and placing it in the storage system. And that is it for this brass, copper, zinc, iron, and gold tutorial. If you liked it, definitely leave a like on the video, share it with your friends and family, make them watch it too, because I need the views. And if you made it this far, subscribe if you're not already. And I will see you all in the next video. Peace.